Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make a miniature version of a Japanese stab bound book. I've previously done a tutorial on how to make a miniature hardback book using Coptic binding where the actual binding was hidden underneath the cover. The stitching in Japanese stab binding however is completely exposed on the front, the back and the side of the book. It might seem quite intimidating but it's actually quite a simple process. In order to make this book you're going to need some paper for the pages, I just used some regular white paper from my printer and I only needed one sheet of A4. You'll also need a scrap of thick cardboard like the type of corrugated cardboard you get in packaging, a push pin or thumbtack, some cardboard for the covers you need it to be fairly thin and stiff. I just used one layer of cereal box card but you could double it up to make it stronger or you could use something like grey board. You'll also need some decorative paper to cover the outside and the inside of the covers. I used some paper that I marbled myself. A few more things you'll need include a metal ruler, some scissors, a pencil, a bulldog clip, some double sided tape if you have it, some glue and a cocktail stick to apply it. I just used some Aileen's tacky glue for this but any PVA would work. A cutting mat and craft knife and also some beading needles and thread. You need particularly thin and pointy needles for this project and I find that beading needles work best. If you can only get hold of one beading needle that's fine but a pack of four will come in very handy as you'll see later. As for the thread you need to use it just needs to be thin enough to go through the holes created with your push pin or thumbtack. I personally used Nymo beading thread. Ok so the very first step is to cut your piece of paper into strips. Each strip should be two and a half centimetres wide. Simply use a pencil and a ruler to mark two and a half centimetre intervals along the two shortest sides. Then put the paper on a cutting mat, place a ruler between two opposing marks, then cut along the ruler with a craft knife. Repeat this all the way along to give you strips of paper that are two and a half centimetres wide. If you have some kind of paper cutter or guillotine handy then of course you can use that instead. And one more note, if you want to change the size of the pages at all then feel free to do so. Next you want to make a card template that will be the same size as the pages in your book. I've personally chosen to make pages that are two and a half centimetres by three and a quarter centimetres. So I drew this rectangle out on some cereal box card and then cut it out. When you're drawing out your template make sure that the corners are square. Then you need to draw a line parallel to one of the short edges. This line needs to be half a centimetre from the edge. You then need to make a mark every half a centimetre along this line. That will give you four marks. Then place all of the paper strips on top of each other on the cutting mat. Make sure all the edges line up. You then use the card template that you've just made to cut the paper strips into the correct size so that they're all two and a half centimetres by three and a quarter centimetres. Simply use your ruler and your craft knife to cut the paper to size. Once you've done that you'll have a stack of paper pages all the same size. You can choose to have as many pages in your book as you want but I'm going to use 25. For the next step put your scrap piece of thick cardboard on your table. Then put the card template on top. What we're going to do now is use our push pin or thumbtack to add four holes to the card template. So take your pin and push it through the card at each of the half centimetre marks we've already made. We're now going to use this template to add holes to our paper pages. 
So stack the template on top of about five paper pages and make sure all the edges line up. Then, as before, push your pin through the holes in the template and also through the pieces of paper. You then repeat the process for the next five pages and then the next five and so on until all the pages have four holes in. Using this method, you can add four holes in exactly the same places on each book page. And now we need to make the book covers. So the first thing we need to do is decide how big we want the covers to be. This is a matter of taste, but I would suggest that you only make them very slightly bigger than the book pages perhaps only a quarter of a centimetre longer and wider. You then need to draw out this size of rectangle on your card. I'm just using some cereal box card. Again, make sure that the corners are square. Then cut it out and then use this rectangle as a template to make another one exactly the same size. So you then end up with two rectangles of card, exactly the same size. Although you can add a hinge onto both covers, I'm only going to add it to my front cover. To do this, I cut one piece of card into two pieces, parallel to the short edge. This line represents where the stitching will go through the cover. So in my case, I've cut the line three quarters of a centimetre from the edge. Then take the larger of the two pieces of card that you now have and cut a slither of card off the short edge. This slither of card needs to be about the same as the thickness of card you're using for the cover. So it's a very small amount. The reason for doing this is because these two pieces are going to be spaced apart in the cover but we still want the total size of the cover to be the same as the back cover. For the next step, we're going to add the decorative paper to the card covers. To do this, you will need some glue, a cocktail stick and some double-sided tape if you have it. First, lay a piece of your decorative paper upside down on your table. Then put the piece of card that's going to be the back cover on top. Use your pencil to make marks roughly three quarters of a centimetre to a centimetre away from the card cover on all sides and cut it out. Then put the excess paper to one side. You then use short strips of the double sided tape to attach the card cover to the centre of the decorative paper. If you don't have tape, you can sparingly use glue. You then need to use your scissors to cut off the corners of the paper. You need to make sure that you don't cut the paper right next to the corners of the card. Instead, leave a little gap between the card corners and where you cut. This gap needs to be at least equivalent to the thickness of the card you're using. And this ensures that the paper will cover the card corners. At this point, neaten up the paper flaps by cutting them to about half a centimetre wide and making sure that they're parallel to the card cover. Next, you need to add a thin layer of glue using a cocktail stick on each of the paper flaps. Then fold these over and stick them securely onto the card. Then leave the glue to dry. You then need to cut out a rectangle of paper, either from the paper you've already used or from a contrasting piece of paper. This rectangle should be slightly smaller than the book cover. You can then glue this to the inside of the cover and leave it to dry. You then do exactly the same for the front cover, except you leave a gap between the two pieces of card. This gap should be just enough to allow the two pieces of card to hinge against each other, i.e. it should be equivalent to the thickness of the card you're using. 
cut out more than enough decorative paper to cover the card. Tape or glue the pieces of card to the paper, making sure to leave that slight gap. Then cut off the corners of the paper, making sure to leave a space between the cut and the card corners. Then neaten up the paper flaps to make sure they're around half a centimetre wide, then glue them into place. Then cut a rectangle from another piece of paper that's slightly smaller than the card cover and then glue it to the inside of that cover. Then leave to dry. Once the covers are dry, we take our card template and just as we did with the book pages, we now use it to add four holes to the covers. Make sure to place the template quite central onto the cover and also make sure that you're positioning the holes on the narrow part of the card cover, i.e. to the left of the hinge. Then just use your pin to add four holes to each cover. Okay, so now we've completed both covers and also all of the book pages. So it's time to get stitching. The first step is to line up the holes in the covers and the pages. To do this, I push my four beading needles through each of the four holes in both the covers and the pages, which is a bit fiddly to do, but it does make sure that they're all aligned. Once they're all lined up perfectly, put the book inside a bulldog clip in order to keep everything in the correct position. You then need to thread your needle. I used about 30 centimeters of thread just to make absolutely sure I'll have enough. I then position the book upside down with the spine facing me and I started binding. I've made a few diagrams to show you exactly what to do. I've also numbered the holes from one to four, going from left to right. First, you need to take your needle and thread down through hole number two, leaving a tail of thread about 10 centimeters long at the top. Then take the needle back above the book and go down through hole number two again. This should form a loop around the spine. You then go up through hole number three. Then take the needle back below the book again and up through hole number three again to form another loop. Then take your needle down through four then down through four again to form a loop around the spine and then down through hole number four for the third time, this time making a loop around the side of the book. Then you go up through hole number three, down through number two, and up through number one. Then you go up through number one again to form a loop around the spine. And then up through hole number one for a third time, this time making a loop around the side of the book. Then take the needle off the thread. You should now have thread tails coming up through hole number one and hole number two. Tie these together securely. I just tied two single knots. Then use your cocktail stick to apply a tiny bit of glue to this knot and leave it to dry. Then once the glue is dry, simply cut off the tails of thread and that's it, you've finished your book. 
The front cover hinges as you can see and this makes it a perfectly usable book. Someone suggested that it would be great for small poems like haikus or for messages for your loved one or even mini drawings. There are lots of things that you can alter about this project if you wish, such as the number of pages, the size of the book, or even the design of the binding. There's lots of different stitching designs that you can find on the internet to make it a bit more detailed and fun. I really hope you've had fun making this little book, and thank you very much for watching.